first of all, thanks a lot for joining. I'm uh, closing KubeCon, so that's uh, it's a good thing or not, I don't know. But uh, really appreciate you all giving the time. I see so many familiar faces here. So Mark couldn't join because you know the airport is very busy and they're all flying out today. So they had to, in order to not miss the flight, but I have a little message from Mark, he'll share later. But yeah, I'm Kunal. I work as a DevRel manager at uh, Cebo. I'm a CNCF ambassador, and uh, I love scaling communities. I do all sorts of things. And um, yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, CNCF students. It's a community group I started uh, to focus more on the student side of things, uh, all the CNCF initiatives and how we can grow the student community. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. And I was mainly the one running it, so I reached out to CNCF. And I was like, how can we grow this? And uh, we have our GitHub repository now. It's uh, cncf slash students. So you can check, it, check that out, but I'll share more about that later. But yeah, before we get started, uh, let me just give a background around why should we like care around the student initiatives? Why should we even bother? Like, who cares about students? You know, why, why should we give any thought to that? So it's a huge talent pipeline because students represent the future workforce of the technology industry. And uh, no one is gonna, you know, we're all gonna go old. So then the students will come, then the students will grow old, and new students will come, so that's why. And by investing in the education and training, you can create a talent pipeline for the cloud native development and ensure that there are, you know, like enough skilled professionals to support the growing demand of uh, cloud native technologies. Innovation, they bring fresh ideas, you know. I graduated last year, so, I, uh, it was so nice to see how welcoming the community is. So bring fresh ideas, new perspectives into the industry, and you can give them, you know, by, by giving, uh, like investing in the education, giving them opportunities to work on cloud native projects. Uh, we can help drive the innovation and the development of new cloud native technologies. I'd like to also have, like, if we can have an interactive session. So anyone, third point around why you should invest in students? Anyone? Creativity, yeah. Comes into innovation, yeah. I have some nice uh, CNCF uh, swag coupons, $50 ones I can give to people who ask questions. <laughs> yeah. And also for the community, you get the community growth. You know, they help, uh, can help uh, establish and grow the cloud native community by engaging with other students and uh, providing them to, you know, uh, with the opportunities to contribute to open source projects and uh, like attend events and stuff, uh, which we'll talk more about later. So yeah, you know, just create a sense of community and foster collaboration and knowledge sharing. Diversity inclusion, investing in students from diverse backgrounds helps to promote diversity, inclusion, and you know, in the cloud native industry. So that's always a good thing, not just for cloud native industry, but any industry, diversity inclusion, always, uh, always props to that. And uh, last one, like yeah, future leaders. So by investing in students to help create future leaders in the cloud native industry, and um, yeah, just find diverse and talented uh, group of people. All right, the next segment is uh, challenges that students face. So if anyone here who works with students who, are, who would like to share what sort of challenges they face when they're getting into a particular, like, have, has anyone mentored anyone, by the way? Like, right, what are the challenges students face? Yes, it's a big one. That's a big one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Josh, go ahead. The most popular one, yeah, I've, I've seen that every year with like, yeah. like LFX or Google Summer of Code. Uh, yeah, that happens quite a lot. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And the thing with internships and jobs, it's like uh, you apply for an internship, they say you need experience, but you need that internship to gain the experience. So I never did, and um, in my university, I gained that experience via open source. If any students are listening, it's a great way to build your resume. All right, so lack, of, lack, of, lack, of, lack of experience. Many students may not have like enough coding experience to contribute to open source projects. That's one of the barriers. Uh, they may be intimidated by the complexity. If you see the CNCF projects, for a student, that's very overwhelming, such big projects. If you ask a student to contribute to like um, Kubernetes, even though Kubernetes is like really 
um, I would say encouraging for like beginners to take part, but still someone who's just getting started when they see the huge code base, they, you know, they are unsure about how to get started. Uh, finding the right project, forget about the right project, finding the right uh, domain in tech. Do I get into web dev? Do I get into machine learning? Do I get into blockchain or all these other things, DevOps? So there are many projects out there, and oftentimes students face this uh, issue as well. Like they, they, they want to find uh, projects that aligns with their skills and interest. So that's another one. The biggest one by far, I think, is also communication barriers. So open source projects, they require a lot of collaboration and collaborate with like different parts of the world, right? And some people may struggle with like cultural differences or language barriers and sometimes just not knowing how to ask the right question. I don't know how many times students just say, I can all help me. I'm stuck. Where are you stuck? What are you doing? And um, yeah, Mark couldn't join us. He, he had, a, as I mentioned, flight, but yeah, he, he, he has shared his experience uh, as well. He's much more senior than me, so hopefully he'll shed some light on that. Uh, the next one is also, uh, well, not just students, most people struggle with this, time management. Um, so like Josh mentioned, university exams. Uh, that can come in the way. University lectures that can come in the way. So especially when they're juggling the coursework and other commitments, they may have limited time dedicated towards open source. That's another one. Uh, the next one is a really popular one. Anyone guess? Also not something that just students face. Yeah, that's it. So imposter syndrome, we, like you may or not good enough uh, to contribute to open source projects or like you don't belong in the community. It's another challenge. And there was one, uh, as someone mentioned uh, from the audience as well, uh, difficulty getting started. So like the process of like setting up a development environment or figuring out how to make contributions or navigating the code base, um, so on and so forth. These are all the challenges. All right, second section done. Any questions? Are we done at the end? Okay. Third section, how to overcome. So folks can seek out mentorship and uh, the guidance from people who are experienced folks in open source communities can look for beginner friendly projects and contribute in small ways like fixing typos or writing documentation. My first contribution was uh, delete a file. That was it. So, so the issue was please delete this file. I deleted it. That was it. That's my first contribution. So that's how you start. It's all right. Um, you can join online communities and forums and uh, you know so many programs like LFX Mentorship, GSOC, uh, apply to CNCF ambassadors, join SIGs. But yeah, doc we're documented in the students uh, doc uh, in the in the students um, repository. I'll share more about that later. All right, current state. We're talking about CNCF students. So I started this. I don't know. How, I don't know when, but it's grown pretty much a lot on the CNCF group. Uh, we have around four thousand people uh, do actively events on Twitter. CNCF students. That's the handle. We have around ten thousand, and uh, with the help of uh, Bill, shout out to Bill. I also started you know, with Bill and we, we talked about it and we also started the student track, which is what my talk is on right now. So there's a student track at KubeCon, which is also a very nice thing. So slowly we're getting there. Um, also, around 10% attendees in KubeCon Valencia in person were students. Correct me if I'm wrong, I thought it was 777. So almost around 10%. Even at this KubeCon, 50 something are first time attendees, right? I saw it on Twitter something like that. So you see the engagement is there, the interest is there. All right, so that's the current state. Uh, one of the bigger questions I get is like, how do we get started and what are all the resources and uh, all these other things? Um, how do we ask good questions and you know, how to be a good mentee, how to be a good mentor? And I really like to lead by example and also for other people like uh, listening to other people's stories. Like if I see someone famous, um, I would just ask them, how, what, what were you like a student? What did you do? You know, how was your journey like? So that's one thing. Uh, and the next one is like the mentor mentee framework, which I wanted to share about. It's also under the CNCF students repository. Oh, I can just show you over here, one second. Uh, so that's the CNCF student repository. Here you can check out, uh, oh, how do I? Yeah, the mission, what is the benefit? What are the goals? The resources, this is our Twitter community group, Intimity Framework. This is a getting started. So like, you know, learn learn about it first. Like why driving cloud native and making it so impactful? 
so on and so forth till like you know creating a local communities and then yeah finding a job after graduation like you mentioned so elaborated on that and some all the resources wise like cncf and stuff like training courses uh, the community groups like attending kubecon and the student track available over here see student track and uh, open source projects and things like that and certifications and all sorts of things so this is in the cncf students repository there's also a mentor mentee framework uh, that you can use right from the start where let's say you don't even have a mentor so it starts with knowing what you want in your career like what do you want to do you know uh, where do you want to lead because if you if you're a student who reaches out to me for mentorship around blockchain you're wasting your time i don't know anything about blockchain you know so oftentimes people do that people are like hey you're a very nice guy you know seen engineer or whatever can you help me with machine learning and the guy does not know anything about machine learning so if you're a student then please like figure out you know what you want and we have given like a detail like more tips and tricks and stuff like that second point is like finding a mentor and then it all goes down with like working with your mentor defining goals and expectations being proactive respecting your mentor's times and boundaries as well and showing gratitude and all sorts of things then measuring growth empathy is very important point uh, not just with mentor mentee stuff but in general with life and other other things as well and then uh, how a mentee becomes a mentor it's all documented here by the way and then there's this uh, one thing i want you to do is a uh, mentor mentee uh, stories so folks who are already like you know in their career now uh, these would be like a series of blog posts like so that people can learn from their experiences if i can reach out to brad brad what were you like a student what would you do differently all sorts of things open source make a pr make it better if there's any tips you want to include feel free but in the end i'll share like a different um like some more resources as well and uh, some of the meetings and stuff that you can be a part of all right mark could not join us but he had a message for like uh, mainly students but uh, mentees as well so just going to play this it's a quick clip just recorded it today because they had an urgent flight <laughs> hi everyone i'm mark boost ceo of sevo and i'm really sorry i can't be with you t today but um hopefully i can give you some insights uh, around the student track and uh, the, the mentee framework, mentor and mentorship framework that we put together and uh, answer your questions, um, or can I be able to answer your questions live on stage? Um, but I'm going to give you a few helpful tips and guidance, hopefully, uh, to get you started. First tip I want to give you is that I get reached out a lot by many students um, and I don't necessarily have enough time to reply to every single one. So if you're looking for a mentor, um, the likelihood is they could be quite a busy person. So how do you stand out from the crowd and actually, um, you know, uh, have a meaningful conversation that they're actually going to respond to you? So the first tip I would like to give you is that it's really important to research the person that you potentially want to, to, to help be your mentor. Uh, understand about their background, what their interests are, and also obviously making sure that those interests even align with your interests. There's no point in having a mentor that doesn't uh, align with your goals or your interests. So first of all, you should be you know, reaching out to them, sorry, researching them um, before you reach out to them. And that's my first tip. And the next thing uh, that I would always advise is that the, the way you respond to people or you reach out to people um, is really important. That that's a really professional approach. Uh, I get a lot of people reach out to me actually that it's almost like a one-liner. Uh, it might be something like, oh, will you be my, will you be my mentor? And that's it. Um, and really, they haven't given me any information about themselves, what they're studying, uh, what they're interested in. And it's highly unlikely that I'm going to respond to that person um, compared to someone that has really given a meaningful insight into what they've been doing, what they've been studying, what interests they have, maybe what projects they've been contributing to, things like that. And if they align with the values and things that I believe in, then it's more likely that I respond to them. An additional tip, not just about if you're reaching out to someone to be a mentor, and it could be soon in the future you want to reach out to try and get a job. And I think it's really important to demonstrate uh, what you've been doing to, to kind of really grab hold of your own career and find a job. Um, and again, I get lots of people reaching out to me and saying, here's my resume and just asking for a job. But really what you want to do is demonstrate all the different contributions and things that you've been doing. And, I, and I'd really encourage people to get involved in the community, get involved in open source projects, maybe become an ambassador or something for a, a project that, that you really like or a technology or something like that. 
and really demonstrate that you're passionate about those subjects. So when you then reach out for, for a job to someone, it's really that interest and that passion is coming through and they're more likely to respond. So you should never, never really reach out to someone and just say, here's my resume, have you got a job? And again, go back, do that research, understand the company and show them what you've been doing. Grab hold of your own career, uh, contribute and demonstrate that when you're reaching out to people, whether that's for a job or whether that's for, to try and find a mentor. So if you eventually find a mentor, uh, and you're working closely with them, it's really important that, that first of all, uh, you understand each other and get to know each other. So I'd always recommend before you even talk about career goals and aligning you know, the, the mentorship program with those things, you just need to really get to know each other and make sure you build that empathy and understand each other. Because if your interests are not aligned, um, if you can't find common ground, it's unlikely that they're gonna be the right suitable mentor for you. So, and sometimes you have to hold your hands up and say, this is not the right mentor, and be honest with each other, and find someone else that is better aligned with your own aspirations and, and goals and things. So that's the first thing you wanna do. But once you move beyond that, um, my recommendation is that you start to talk about what your long-term goals are and your interests, and making sure that if the mentorship program, whether that lasts, say, one year, three years, five years, you know, you've mapped out some longer term goals that you can work towards um, and, and make sure they align with where you want to be in five years time, say. So that's really important, but you can't just be too focused on the long term goals. You do need to set short term goals as well, because, um, you know, people not, aren't necessarily very good uh, at focusing on real long term things. It's easier to, to sort of break that down into smaller chunks and gradually doing building blocks towards those. So it's important that you set those, those short-term goals that are more achievable um, in, a, in a smaller length of time. So probably one of the most important things um, that maybe I'll leave you with is empathy. Because I think that is the most important character trait that both the mentor and the mentee need to have. For instance, on the, the mentee side, they've got to understand that sometimes these mentors are giving up a lot of their own spare time to help and support you. And they're very busy maybe in their, in their own career and, and jobs and, and things that they do. So it's important to understand and appreciate um, what the mentor's doing for you and having that empathy for their own time, um, being respectful of their time. Maybe sometimes meetings and things that you have planned have to move because uh, if, it, if it's, for instance, myself, who's a busy CEO, uh, I have meetings that might come up, very important things out of the blue. So I might have to adjust the schedule. So it's being respectful of their time. Um, and, and vice versa, from a, from a mentor's point of view, you've really got to build that empathy with your student um, or your mentee to actually understand their interests and, and ensuring it's, it's, um, it's not you just teaching them, it's about aligning them with their goals uh, and supporting them on that process and, and really getting to know that person as an individual and not treating them as a cookie cutter process. Because we, as we all know, we're all very, very different. And it's important that you map out a program is, that, is for that, that works for that individual's uh, goals and not everyone in, in general. What I always encourage you to do is, is reach out to, to people like the CNCF. They have great programs in place. Uh, and you can check out uh, the CNCF, CNCF uh, repository on GitHub at CNCF forward slash students. And it's really great information there. And we'd also ask people to contribute towards that. So if you want to get involved and help build out this framework and evolve this framework over time, you know, get involved. And because, you know, the CNCF is an amazing community of people. And we want to encourage as many people to come into this and, and support this program, because it, it's really important that we look after the next generation. All right, that was Mark. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Couldn't be here. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Boost, CEO. Hold on. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, again, you can find it on GitHub, the, uh, the framework and then the mentorship programs. These also you can find on uh, GitHub. It's a CNCF slash mentoring. Uh, there's Google Summer of Code, LFX, and all sorts of things. And then there's the student track. Um, it's new, but uh, I, there's lot, lots of improvement that need to be done in the student track. Um, ideally, more, more, more talks. Th those would be nice, um, because we have, we're forgetting so many students attending, even in person and virtually. Then having more talks uh, in the student track, more people sharing their experiences, high quality talks. Uh, if you know anyone, just encourage them to submit, or you can submit one as well. Um, so ideally, like hopefully in Chicago, uh, the student track uh, would look much 
diverse, much better, more nice talks, more stories from people, because these LFX mentees also graduate, you know, um, periodically, so they can share their journey and all sorts of things. So lots of rooms for improvement. Um, I really like better visibility. Uh, why are we talking about uh, the CNCF students specifically? So yeah, more visibility, more uh, like around resources, improving communication and uh, collaboration and, and mentorship and you know, more opportunities around that. Uh, some of the future goals are like, uh, it'd be nice to have like, uh, the, the, have the repository so we can have a website that just lists down all the things. If anyone asks you, how do I get involved in the CNCF? I, I don't know anything. Can you just, okay, just go to CNCF slash students and that's it. Technical questions, mentorship questions, everything should be in that repository. All the things you need, all the links, everything. That's the ideal, what is CNCF students? What it could be, that's what ideally it is. Uh, leading by example, so people who have been there, them sharing their examples, their, show the, their stories, their journeys. And um, local student groups, that's uh, another thing that would be nice, like we have the CNCF ambassadors like the student stuff, like people, and other companies are doing this, Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors, GitHub Campus Experts, Google Developer Clubs, uh, Major League Hacking Coaches, so something like that to empower the CNCF community. Uh, event stuff, yeah, there's the DanCon scholarship that is going on, which is very cool, and then the student track. So student track is set in place, but I think it needs a lot of work because we need more people submitting, so ideally, yeah, can't have a track with more talks. Uh, resources. Uh, the github.com slash cncf slash students um, for the open source program cncf slash mentoring and um, I was talking to cncf around uh, making a student like working group but there's a mentoring working group already under tag uh, contributor strategy so I'd recommend you join that because that also works around it, it focuses on the mentoring initiatives or cncf like cncf takes part in a lot of mentoring initiatives uh, like I just mentioned so there's a working group around that you can join that working group uh, under tag contributor strategy and they have meetings on every second Tuesday or something. I could be wrong, but i uh, pretty sure it's second Tuesday. But yeah, do check out um, where the meetings are. You can join the meetings, get involved. The Twitter is CNCF students. And then the community group is also community of CNCF trio. You can find CNCF students there as well. And events wise, we have KubeCon student track. But yeah, lots, lots we can do. This is currently what we have. Um, so we discussed about why I care about students. We discussed about the challenges they face. We discuss about the current state, what we have. I listed all the resources. We checked the GitHub repository and I uh, shared how you can get involved. I shared about the meetings. What did I miss? No, that's it. All right, thank you. Questions? Yeah? Oh, yeah, Mike. Oh, it's off. Yeah. Hi, I'm Christy. Mm -hmm. So you shared the challenges that students usually face either when contributing to the CNCF or other open source projects, but what have been the challenges that you have faced getting this program established? But the time. <laughs> that was the one because I, I, I started this and then uh, I, I scaled it like till like we did till 4,000 and then 10,000 and then a few people uh, Hel like they definitely helped out quite a lot. Uh, shout out to Bart. Um, he's been doing a lot of events. Um, but ideally, my challenges that I have faced have been just proper structure. And that's why I reached out to CNCF. Like, you know, the community is there and it's so many people, uh, so many students in the community who are willing to help out. So um, take it under CNCF and then let's just find contributors. So my biggest challenge has been just like more structure, making it more formal. So ideally, let's say I want to do I want to do some live stream around students. I don't want to do that on my channel. I want to do that on like, you know, like the CNCF stuff. So more structure, it, it would be needed. One more thing, another challenge is like, I started this, like the, there was the CNCF students Twitter and I'm tweeting from that. So in a, in a real, in a nice world, uh, anyone should be able to do that. And I think Kubernetes does this why you make a PR and then your tweet goes out. Same thing can be done for students. It's like uh, no one point of contact, but like a, like a community can run it. But yeah, that's why I mentioned that you can join this uh, mentoring working group under TAC Contributor Strategy. They have doing regular meetings. So you can help out with that and I'll, I'll join that as well and then we can take it from there. Yeah. Thank you, good question. I'll give you the coupon. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, go ahead. Um, so one of the things we were discussing outside before the session started um, is a problem from the mentor perspective. 
The what uh, perspective? From the mentor perspective. Yes. Right? Hmm. Because one of the problems that we have with recruiting mentors to get involved with mentoring students is the very low rate at which students turn into contributors, right? Because at least for people on um, coming to this from an open source rather than academic perspective, the reason why they're doing the mentorship is because they're hoping that their mentee will turn into an ongoing contributor for the project. But because students are generally going through a lot of life changes, that only happens eh, maybe 15, 20% of the time. Um, the, um, I'd be interested in working on ways through CNCF students that we can actually sort of increase the rate of stickiness, uh, maybe by you know, selecting who's applying to the mentorships to begin with, um, uh, so that the mentors will feel more encouraged to participate. Mm. Yeah, one of the biggest issues, and I was talking to in the last KubeCon, Dims, he mentioned the same thing. Um, I think, yeah, that's a, that's a big concern. And uh, that's what some students have to also realize that when you talk about these initiatives like GSOC or LFX or whatever, it's not about just getting in, into this program, it's about staying with the project after it's over. Um, so ideally if you, so what I have seen is like there are some, some students who went on becoming mentors um, in some of, the, uh, some of the projects and the common trait amongst them was that they didn't care about getting selected in LFX they would contribute irrespectively. So that's the trait that I have seen. And it, it, it wouldn't be like, oh, LFX applications are starting next week. I'm gonna contribute now and then I'll get selected and I'll get paid and then I'll get that in my resume. So that's one type of people. Other type of students are like, okay, LFX, I'll apply, no worries, but I'll still contribute irrespectively because I wanna learn, I wanna you know, grow. That's one of the main motivations why students contribute to open source is learning and to be quite fair, yeah, job as well. And that is fine. Like open source is a great way to represent your skills and if you get a j job or role via that, highly encouraged it. But yeah, uh, I think that's a challenge and maybe you can have a discussion around how to retain contributors and get more mentors. Um, yeah, in the mentor mentee framework, there's a point in the how to find a mentor section. If you don't know someone, you can't just go out of the blue and get someone to mentor you personally. Right? Who, who like, oh, why, why should I mentor you personally, right? So when you're first starting out, I think it's nice to have decentralized mentorships, so ideally asking questions in public, joining the Slack communities. If you have any questions, just ask it in the public channel rather than depending on like one person. And when you're in that project, in that community for a while, you may build relationships of people may help you like uh, personally as well. But I think it, it, it will help you as a student if you keep more discussions in public. But yeah, if uh, we need more mentors, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more question, yeah. Hi Kunal, uh, yeah. this is Laksh and I'm also a student. So my question is like, do you, uh, along with uh, CNCF students, plan to collaborate with universities and uh, maybe pass on some lower leadership roles to students as well? Yeah, again, there's no leadership, like that's what I'm saying. There's no like role or stuff, stuff like that. It's open, so anyone can contribute. And this is not like, a, like we, I, I wanted to set it as a working group, but we I discussed it and they were like, the, you can talk to the mentoring people. So it's still relatively new in terms of establishing it so you can join the next uh, contributor strategy mentoring working group meeting then we'll discuss how we can you know more formalize this um i can't speak for the cncf so ideally it'd be nice to support like universities and colleges but uh, and they have been like very encouraging like i, I spoke to them and they were like yeah uh, i spoke to bill bill uh, you know if you go to the cncf students repo there's a campus captains thing we were working on so these are like student representatives at local universities. So again, I can't speak for uh, CNCF, but uh, I think most of the resources that are available, like training courses, and you can attend KubeCons virtually as a student for free, and uh, the certifications and stuff. Um, I think those are accessible to everyone. So in the end, it just it's like who takes the initiative to 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 start this in your campus, and um, ideally, like yeah, right now. Um, maybe in the future when people have like you know when we discuss it and we see the value, then yeah, maybe. CNCF does something like that, but yeah, I, I really one, one thing is like, I'd like to close it with this. You can apply as a CNCF ambassador if you're a student as well, because uh, the, they recently got announced, the new CNCF ambassadors, and a lot of them were students, so you can apply. So if you want official mentorship support from CNCF or whatever, apply as a CNCF ambassadors as a student. Thank you. That's nice, they have made it very structured now. So they do like, uh, it's more structured, the ambassador program. Like it, it's very good. 
First of all, I would like to uh, thank you very much for kickstarting this movement and uh, leading it forward, both as a master student and um, honestly as a person quite irritated with the current state of academia. Mm -hmm. uh, last time on the uh, Kubernetes Community Days in Amsterdam, I think it was in February, um, there was a session where it was possible to ask questions to Priyanka and I explicitly asked about what's what, what are the plans of CNCF regarding empowering the students and giving them some kind of way to contribute within the community and learn how it is? And she mentioned that uh, something like this is starting. So I'm really, really happy that it's actually a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I gotta say that, uh, as I mentioned, I'm quite irritating, irritated with the state of ac academia, which doesn't really give students many opportunities to see how it actually is in the ongoing world but also uh, how stubbornly they're sticking to the old ways of teaching and not really trying new ways of um, doing stuff. I use very uh, specific example back when I uh, asked question to Priyanka of using some obscure uh, enterprise distribution of Postgres for the databases students. While when I showed to my uh, bachelor's colleagues how to kickstart uh, Postgres database in a Docker container, they were amazed, but of course nobody even showed them Docker in one of the first uh, years of their bachelors. And this is even a problem in pretty good universities, but I can speak uh, for myself, because I'm uh, a master's student at TU Delft here in the Netherlands. There are some in incentives also among the professors themselves to incentivize students to contribute to open source. Um, for instance, many software architecture related courses can embed uh, asking students to contribute into um, into the open source um, mm -hmm. projects. For instance, we're asked to choose a project, analyze it, and make some contributions. It could be documentation, as you mentioned, but it could be also some features or bug fixes. So I think uh, in addition to all the points that you mentioned regarding uh, students uh, doing some um, movements on their own and also students developer clubs like for example the google ones yep. it could be also good if students could actually reach out to the professors who uh, have um, this forward thinking of sorts and um, try to ask them to change the curriculum of their courses to uh, include this way of uh, thinking analyze the project try to contribute because let's be honest the, f the feeling of having your first pull request accepted mm -hmm. to the upstream is priceless. Yeah. Now, well, if, you, if you know those kinds of professors, you're very lucky. I did not attend university because of that reason, but I, I started contributing to open source in my freshman year, and for the same reasons. I was not like, uh, I can only speak for myself, but yeah, that's uh, like the gap between theory and practical knowledge is a really big one in the universities. But yeah, uh, thank you for sharing. Yeah, and the question, thank you. Thanks for the question, yeah. I'll give you the coupon. <laughs> so uh, I, I am a professor at, at NYU. Um, <laughs> NYU created, is great, my college is yeah. garbage. <laughs> I created uh, two of the CNCF projects. One is a graduated and one is an incubating level. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of students who've contributed to those. Um, really everything that happens uh, at, at NYU at the tan, you know, in Tandon is very focused on open source and real world. So I understand that certain universities, especially universities in certain parts of the world, have a reputation for not doing very practical things. And I I'm, I'm understand that. Um, I want to say that's not universal. Um, and what I really wanted to, to ask you about is, from my perspective as a professor who has lots of students that work on different things and contribute to different projects, I've done things where I've mentored students for all sorts of open source projects, like, you know, uh, things well outside the LF2, you know, Tor, and we've patched all kinds of bugs in Python and the Linux kernel and done a lot of work like that. Um, so what, what would an ideal setup or partnership be from a faculty or school perspective? Uh, because one thing that I've 
I've heard here is, you know, viewing this more like a Google Summer of Code thing where students get pay. Um, my experience is that many students also really want to do something like get credit, like college credit, mm -hmm. or do a, th a thesis or something like that. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe another way to approach this is to try to set up a program like that where a faculty member at different universities can identify them as someone who's willing to um, effectively be the name on the registration for the fact that this student is contributing to a Linux Foundation project and give that student a grade in it's the my end. my dream. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so that might be another yeah. avenue. No, that was, that's my dream. I really, like, um, I, I actually said that exact same thing in my freshman year. I was like, oh, I'm contrary to open source. Can I not use this as a way of credits? So I think it depends on university whether they accept it or not, right? If you contribute to open source, we will take that as credits. So first of all, really thank you for you, like for encouraging your students to do that. I think we're running out of time, but I'll take more questions because I'll be here. I want to end it with a few things. I forgot. Oh, uh, come on, come on. What, what was I going to say? Yeah, uh, so I was going to say, yeah, thanks for joining. And uh, these are all the resources. Ideally, in an ideal, you know, good world, anyone who asks questions around, I'm a student, I want to grow, I want to become a mentor, I want to get a job, I want to do this, I want to do that. You should be able to point them to CNC of like students. And also from the community side, there are already plenty of resources and open source programs, mentorship initiatives that the CNCF runs. So growing those a little bit more, like if these are there for the benefits, then you should definitely make advantage of that. The student track, students are like, hey, we want our stories to be heard. Apply to the student track. I was a student track, like I reviewed some proposals and stuff, uh, along with Brad this time. We got like 12 submissions or something. So why are not more people applying? More students should apply. If you're attending, might as well apply. Um, so yeah, just make use of these resources and just give ideas, share ideas, how we can do it better, how we can support students, what other resources we can provide, what are the challenges they have, and uh, attend the working group meeting. But yeah, just take a screenshot, this should be it. And uh, GitHub repository, if you have any ideas, you can also open up an issue, and there's a project discussion section as well. Or you can text me personally as well. I would regret that later, but uh, you can do that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, because I get... Uh, it's so already too many things happening. But yeah, uh, happy to help, happy to grow this and uh, looking forward to collaborating with everyone. I'll be here to discuss stuff, but yeah, I'll see you in some of these meetings, the working group ones. Yeah, all right, thank you.